Yeah. I've been interested in board games for many years. Yeah. And um, I was doing some research, doing voluntary work with uh, English Heritage, and um, I I came across these pieces of bone plating, hmm. um, and because I knew what uh, uh, dice tiles looked like, um, I'd come across them about six months before. Yeah. I recognised their distinctive uh, slots for the, the diagonal cuts that they had in them, which is very distinctive of dice towers. Joe, put a, put a couple on the um, back. Yeah, put a couple on the they discovered in the twenties, weren't they? These, these bits. That's right. And yes. then you you sort of help piece it, piece all the clues together, right? Yes, that's right. What what were dice towers used for then? Well, dice towers were used uh, for gambling and for playing the Roman equivalent of backgammon. Uh, right. Sometimes they'd, they'd set up this game. It's called Duodecim Scripta, the game of the twelve lines. Yeah. And um, uh, th there are depictions um, in in mosaics of of people. Uh, playing backgammon, yeah. uh, we're using one of these dice towers. I don't. Anyway. I don't. Okay. They were really big gamblers, were they, the Romans? Uh, they, they, um, they did enjoy their gambling. Yes. They and this helped. Did it be fair? Did it? Or the, yes, that was part of the idea was to um, ensure that uh, there, w there was fair play. Mm. Um, and the poet Martial in the first century AD um, actually says that. Um, you can't cheat with a dice tower. Right. Well, th I have <laughs> my doubts about this because, of course, you can. Th we also have examples from Roman times where they've loaded dice. Um, so, n right. no matter how what way you throw them, um, uh, the number might come up. But, but dice towers were essentially. Well, it's thought that they were in invented to help stop cheating. Um, the, these these pieces are they're very very old, aren't they? What, where where do they date from? Um, well, these decorative uh, bits of uh, um, or ornamental pieces yeah. are thought to date from late Roman times. We're talking about um, late Roman is from sort of 275 AD onwards right. um, to, to the end of the Roman times. And in Britain, obviously, that would be 410 when, when the Romans yeah. left here. Um, so I think we're, we're talking about sort of from about 300 AD, mm. um, from sometime between 300 and 400 AD. And d these um, pieces, how did, did it, did it, when you found them, or when you were sort of asked to put them, put the clues together as it was, uh, did you know instantly that that's what it was, or? Well, no, I didn't. Um, I mean, I, I, I'd been working at Lullingston, um, doing some work on um, some pieces of bone pieces at Lullingston, and I'd found a games box there. Yeah. Um, uh, which was set on a games board and um, so when I was looking through uh, the Richborough excavation reports and I found some of these pieces of bone plating in a photograph in, in, the, in the excavation reports I thought, oh they look interesting I, um, I thought uh, it would be nice to try and uh, put those pieces of bone plating together Yeah. and then um, it dawned on me that these were pieces from a dice tower. Um, now, the the reason why uh, the reason why I, I, d I discovered it, I saw it where others people ha other people hadn't, was because I knew what dice tiles were like. I I'd, I'd come across them about six months before. Hmm. Um, what in books or? Yes, um, yeah. I'd found um, I'd found a picture on the internet. I'd found an article that. Um, uh, just describe the, the the two existing ones uh, that had had been found. There was one found in Egypt and one found in Germany. Mm. And this article actually explained exactly how they how they worked. And these pieces now they'll they'll be kept here at the museum, will they? Yes, these pieces will remain here at Richborough at the m museum here for anyone yeah. who wants to come and see them. Yeah. And uh, it's really it's very exciting because um, it it uh, brings to life what uh, it must have been like to be playing. Roman board games. And what were these games? And if you're a games expert, what kind of games did they play? Well, um, with, uh, with, with uh, the dice tower, they, they do gambling with dice, and uh, um, 
the backgammon as as I yeah. uh, do a Dickens scripter, mm. as I explain the game of the twelve lines. But also they would play a game called La Trunculi or Ludus La Trunculorum. That means the game of soldiers, and that's a bit like a um, bit like a game of drafts, where you'd have two two armies facing each other. Um, it was this is all before chess. Mm. So, uh, chess oh right, didn't exist it predates in that, that. Yeah, that's right. And they had one or two other games. They had a game of knuckle bones that they could play, um, um, <coughs> and uh, and yeah, lots of other things. Right, <laughs> they had a three yeah. three in a row game, a bit like our noughts and crosses. And this was all done for money and coins and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, or do you think they would have traded animals and stuff or not? <laughs> well, um, money, uh, property sometimes. Right. Well, <laughs> people got addicted to gambling. Um, the emperor... Just like now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the Roman emperors were, were famous for what, uh, gambling. Yeah. Um, the emperor Claudius even wrote a book about dice, uh, uh dicing. Um, so, yeah, yeah, um... They they did like their gambling and they must have lost a lot of money on them. That's all I can say. Um. Yes. 